Hi guys, this is Alice from All My Favorite Things from the Screen with some final predictions for Season 2 of Only Murders in the Building. We are under a week until the Season 2 premiere. It's taken me a little bit to get this out there because I've just wanted to try and think of something outside of the box. But for Season 2, we will do a weekly recap and attempt to decode the mysteries of who killed Bunny Folger. I've had many theories throughout the last nine months. You can find these and trailer breakdowns on my YouTube channel. With all that said, let's get into my theories of what's going on with the Arconia, who I have excluded from the people that may have killed Bunny and my top suspect in the murder, as well as a bold prediction for the season and who I think will be murdered at the end. If you're not familiar with my videos on only murders in the building, I have an overarching theory called the Arconian Crime Syndicate. This is the idea that has evolved over months, but basically states that there is an organized ring, that there is an organized crime ring working out of the Arconia. This includes, of course, Teddy Demas, his Shine On Funeral Home, that was a black market front for jewelry acquisition and sales. I think that. Teddy and all these other people, their actions have been going on since the building's opening that the owner and many original or longtime tenants are also involved. This is what I think the various hidden passageways, the elevator are used for to move illegal goods back and forth without being seen by the general public inside the building. As the syndicate is likely a long-lived empire, they're likely to work with New York's finest to help facilitate and cover up some of their actions that pass outside of the Arconia's walls. This is why Tim Kono's phone was never submitted for exploitation. And with that said, here are a couple people I do not think killed Bunny. First, the late show up to the series, but the Arconiacs. Though they have a motive of wanting the podcast to continue, especially after Charles stated that they would return in the event of another murder. I don't think they would have the means or opportunity to do so, and they also take the chance that their podcast doesn't continue because the hosts are arrested for murder. Another late addition, Sass Pataki, and this will have slight spoilers for articles that I've read about season two, not any reviews or anything like that, but articles stated that there will be an attempt to reboot Brazos. I don't know if it is successful or not, but I think this is the reason that Sass went to see Charles in the first place. I remember when she was on the phone, she was telling the person that, no, he looks good and something along the lines of like, I think he can, uh, he can still work. So even though Sass was his stunt double, it would be hard for her to replace him as the iconic character of Brazos on the show. So I think she would have it in her best interest that Charles is alive and not in jail. Up next, we have Cindy Canning and Poppy White. Their whole business is based on finding people who commit crimes. The Arconia Avengers did not commit a crime, so framing them is a bit of a dangerous move and does not guarantee a good conclusion to her podcast. I think Cindy will help them figure out who actually killed Bunny, but is not personally involved. Jan. Now, Jan is currently in jail, and I think orchestrating a murder from behind bars is way harder than a lot of people think and something Jan wouldn't or couldn't pull off. I don't think that the story will get that wacky and I think the podcasters will go to her for help. Sort of a silence of the lambs type of idea but at the end of the day she is a crazy killer and can't be trusted. She will use this time with Charles to make him see something dark about his past or lead them in the wrong path. Up next, we have Ursula, and although she may know more about everything that's going on in the building, I don't think that she is a guilty party of murdering Bunny. I can't see any type of clear motive that she would want to murder Bunny or make it seem as if our podcasters were guilty. I think she is a great character, and I'm glad to see more of her, but I'm just not seeing it yet for her. After that, we have another newcomer, Alice, played by Cara Delevingne. She will be a nice addition to the cast. At the end of the day, I think she's only in Mabel's life to ride her coattails, so to speak, to help get her name out even more, Alice's name out even more, become more popular, to have more influence in the art world. 
Mabel is one of the most popular people in New York right now, possibly the United States. So popular that Amy Schumer's character is wanting to make their story of the podcast and Janet Killing Tim Kono into a TV series. These guys are very popular, and I think that Alice is just using this opportunity to her advantage and will in the end be inconsequential to the murder, but a big part of Mabel's growth. Amy Schumer, her character, I believe, is Amy Schumer. Uh, maybe a, just a little bit more crazy version of herself. And as I stated, she is attempting to get the story of the first season podcast made into a show. And I believe that is essentially what she is there for. She was not in the building or anything of that sort at the end of season one, I do not believe. So I think she is just there as a person to befuddle the series, make it seem as if there are more different things going on. It's definitely a red herring if they make it seem as if she could be guilty, but I think she's just a nice B storyline that I will very much enjoy. After all that, we have to try and get into who I think murdered Bunny, but before I can say who I think killed Bunny, we need to go back to season one in the murder of Tim Kono and who killed him. Of course it was Jan, but think out of all the crazy things that happened last season and what we saw in the trailers for season two, such things as Teddy Demas running the black market jewelry operation, Tim Kono trying to take him down, all the secret passageways and what seems like the police not doing their job. At the end of the day, all of this had nothing to do directly with Tim Kono's murder. Yes, Jan thought he was cheating because of the ring, but she was crazy to begin with, and I'm sure she has killed before. Tim wasn't killed because he knew what Teddy was doing, or because he knew of potential other activities going on in the Arconia. He was killed by what appears to be a sole actor with personal reasons. Sting, the mystery of the tie-dye guy, it's all great for story, but at the end of the day, it had no effect on who killed Tim Kono. So likewise, I think Bunny was killed by one person with sole actions, and this person's intentions was not at all to at first blackmail our podcasters, but took this opportunity to convolute what was going on and distract from what really happened. Like we are distracted by all these other things that happened instead of going after the one person and the one actual reason that Tim Kono was killed. To know who would have reason to kill Bunny, I had to go back to anyone who spoke ill of Bunny in the first season, and it didn't happen that much or that openly. The most openly person that we saw that people probably noticed was Howard, and he was at odds with Bunny because she forced him to vote to kick out the Arconian Avengers for violating other tenants' privacy and home by making them all characters in a podcast. He seemed to make up with Bunny, and I think he has more to do with the illegal activities that are happening than with her murder. He may be behind the notes left on Oliver and Jan's door, but the murder of Bunny, I think that was someone else. I thought back to one of my earlier videos where I stated that we should look out for someone who replaces Bunny as the head of the board, and I think this is where we will find our murderer, someone who wants power. Uma would be the first person we would think of trying to take over Bunny's place, but I think she was too close to her, but we're not going to let her ride out into the sunset. We're going to keep her in her back pocket, but what I'm proposing is that Ndidi Tim Kono's next door neighbor killed Bunny because she wanted those extra rooms, but not just the extra rooms. In episode 9, when Buddy coerced Howard to vote to kick out the podcasters, Ndidi said, Don't you bunny him, bully. Enough with you and your New York co op power games. She is the only other person, aside from Mabel saying that Bunny's the most hated person in the building, that has bad mouthed Bunny. She said she's tired of her using her position to get what she wants, basically. For a little bit more motive, here's some clarification on what she probably meant by co-op power games. In order to understand, you first got to know what a co-op is in New York City. Co-ops 
also known as cooperatives, are owned by a corporation and are not considered real property. When buying a co-op apartment in New York City, you're actually buying shares to the corporation that are allocated to that apartment and this entitles you to a proprietary lease. Now, Ndidi attempting to get more shares of the corporation and becoming the next board president where she thinks that she could run things fairly. This would be an interesting story, even though Oliver uh, funnily stated that it's not the first time someone would have killed someone over real estate in New York. It wouldn't. And I think it would be pretty funny if that was the actual reason someone died in the second season. I mentioned in one of my previous videos that we should look out for who was vying for Bunny's old position. Now, if Ndidi does in fact attempt to take her place, that will cement my idea that it is her who killed Bunny. And if she does not, whoever does, this is going to be one of my biggest persons of interest. But I think it's going to be her. I think after stabbing Bunny inside of Bunny's own apartment, possibly with the help of Uma, she's not out of the woodworks yet. Bunny went to Mabel for help. Mabel thinking it was intruder, because Bunny probably couldn't talk. She stabs her with her knitting needle, and this is when Bunny dies. Charles and Oliver come in, followed by the police, and this is where we find our podcasters at the end of season one. If this is indeed what happened, indeed he would use this opportunity as a means to obscure her actions and move everyone's eyes to our podcasters as perpetrators, while she hopes to silently and unassumingly take her place. Well, that's my theory on who killed Bunny. I wanted to go out of left field with someone I don't think anyone is expecting, and it is a bit of a bold prediction itself. I'm sure as the series goes on, I'm gonna have to ring myself in and I will get caught up in all the side quests and the storylines that I don't think actually has anything to do with Bunny's murder. But who knows, we'll see what will happen. We need to take it one step further with a bold prediction. My bold prediction is that Lucy is a bad kid and a bad influence. We've seen a little bit of her and she seemed to be helping our podcasters, but I'm going to say that she isn't what Charles remembers. Maybe she's kind of a bad kid. Maybe she's more like her mother than Charles really knows and thinks of Charles as a boring person. Anything's possible, and but that's my bold prediction that Lucy is going to be my last bold prediction. It's going to be a doozy on who I think will be murdered at the end of this season. And there are so many possibilities. I'm going to keep it to two and hopefully narrow it down to one of these two by the end of the season. I'm hoping I don't need to change either one of them out. But first, I'm going to go with Charles's neighbor, Arnoff. I've got no real reason to think it could be him. But narratively, if they want to keep Lucy in the show, which I kind of hope they do, it would be great to have him die and then his connection with Lucy and his daughter or his children because I don't know if he has any uh, boys or girls that that would be a great way for them to continue to try and figure out what happened and who killed him my second prediction my second bold prediction of who will be killed at the end of the season I'm going to say Jose Torres this would be a good reason to get Oscar back and this would be a great way to find out more true details about what's going on in the background of the Arconia things that we don't really know the true reasons for all these secret passageways and things like that actually have no reason or have no bearing on the murder in season one or season two I do not believe these are just my theories there's no proof behind any of that but either way i hope you liked my final predictions for season two of only murders in the building be sure to come back on the 28th where we will decode the first two episodes of only murders after they are released you'll be able to find my initial thoughts as an audio podcast just a few hours after the show airs but then a more in-depth video later in the day as i'm able to collect my thoughts and put together some theories maybe a couple of videos a week. Either way, thank you for watching. My name is Dallas and I will see you on the rooftop.